So I did my first radio interview. Yes, radio interview. And it was so exciting. It was here in Jamaica on a local radio station, Love 101 FM, um, on their program, Engage. And we were talking about what it's like for me personally, being a Christian YouTuber and a Christian creative, you know, photographer, videographer, graphic designer. You guys know the works. And I also spoke about what life for me has been like as a Christian leading up to this point to now being a YouTuber. So I thought it would be cool to share with you guys um, just a little bit of getting to know me, you know. Um, there is no other video on the channel like this, so I, I thought I'd share it with you. And what I did was I video recorded myself while I was being interviewed. I was here at home in the studio. I didn't go to the radio station because, you know, pandemic protocols. So they called me on the phone and... We did the interview like that and I asked the radio station if they could have sent me the audio recording from their end and they were kind enough to do it. Thank you. So I edited it together and I'm going to share with you, share it with you, with you guys now. And um, I tried my best not to edit it too much because um, I wanted it to be as authentic as possible. There were some music that we discussed that was being played in the background, but I can't include that music, those popular songs here in the video because copyright and um i answered a question there was a two-part question in there why did i get baptized and why did i get baptized again because i said i got baptized twice but when they asked me why did i get baptized again i did not hear the again portion of the question so i ended up answering that question maybe two or three times and it was such an embarrassing moment when i was listening the playback of the audio i was like oh my jeez why am I embarrassing myself on public radio? But hey, we live and we learn, right? And it's my first time, so I think I get points for messing up or I am allowed to mess up. So when we get to that part of the interview, I'll jump in here and actually answer the question properly for you guys. So I'm done talking. Let's get straight into the interview. It is now six o'clock right here on the Family Station Love 101. You're inside Engage and uh, Christopher James. Hey, hey, Kalanda, can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. A Christian creative helping other creatives get started on their journey with photography, videography, and graphic design using YouTube tutorials. He's been well known for his wedding photography and and video and video wedding video highlight reels. And so, back in 2016, uh, he decided um, he started his YouTube journey with his channel Learn Share Video fo Photo Video. I think I photo video, yeah. Uh, learn share photo video which now has about ten thousand subscribers well congratulations sir Thank he's you. got about 12 years experience in photography graphic design and videography combined and he aspires to simplify complex creating soft or sim 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 simplify the complex creating software so that the average man can be as creative as the professional chris good afternoon yes, sir how are good you good afternoon sir good Good, good, good. Firstly, thank you so much for having me, Kalando. Oh, it, always a pleasure. Having yeah, a I mean, I, I was like, <laughs> this is a no-brainer because I've seen some of your work <laughs> and I know that you are definitely one of those people that I like to work with. We, do, we, do, we don't get enough opportunities, but that's another story for another time. But anyway, <laughs> how is COVID treating you? Uh, it's good. Guys, it's good. I haven't contracted it any at all, so that is good. Well, yes. I <laughs> um, would hope that you stay best. that way. Exactly. I was just about to say that doing my best to keep it that way, um, following the necessary protocols and stuff. So it's it's been good. I can't complain. God is good. God is good. Awesome. If I was to ask you, Chris, what are three things that you would use to describe yourself if you were trying to tell somebody about Chris? Have you ever thought of that? Um, I've never thought of that, but I know I have. I can probably think about three things, yeah. I would probably say, first of all, I'm a Christian. In everything I describe myself as a Christian, um, I'm a creative person. People always tell me that. And I, people always tell me I'm very, very dramatic. So I can't run away from that one. You hear me? Uh, I didn't hear some of it. Say it again. Can you speak up a little bit? Oh, I, I was saying that... Um, I'm a Christian. I always describe myself as a Christian in whatever it is I'm doing. And um, I'm a creative. People always tell me I'm creative. And I know I'm creative based on what I do. 
and um lastly people always tell me that i am very very dramatic so oh. that one has to be on the list <laughs> why do they say you're dramatic i have no idea everybody says it <laughs> so i guess it's true <laughs> do you think so yeah absolutely definitely so th then then you just kind of allow them to name it yeah <laughs> yeah okay do you have like favorite things um i do i do i do are these things that can be shared on air oh yes yes definitely <laughs> <laughs> all right uh tell me three of your favorite things and then you have to list three things that you definitely do not like it's kind of funny because i'm thinking about what are my three favorite things i don't know go on t tell me yeah i really, really think about that um but for me i'd have to say my first favorite is a good nice big cup of um tetley tea with condensed milk that's my number one favorite oh my god what tetley tea any day yes any day of the week any time of day just give me a cup of that and i am good um and not everybody can mix it for me not everybody um next thing is obviously when i'm creating whether it's photos videos um graphics whatever that's always that's always a favorite time of mine and um thirdly i always enjoy watching movies with my wife always always even though she doesn't like watching with me because i'm always talking it out especially if it is a movie i am more familiar with than her but i enjoy it you talk it out and disturb the woman no no no. i like give her no no no. i give her like backstories and stuff like that explain stuff to her and oh. then she's always yeah, yeah and she's always side eyeing me like i'm watching the movie too, i don't need know? a backstory <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. But I do enjoy that. I do uh, enjoy that. Okay. Uh, so the, I just remember now, like, there's one thing that I just love, 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 love most in the world. And it's like when my daughter kisses me on the cheek. <laughs> that's the best thing. And she's, nice, nice. I can imagine. Yeah, that's like the best thing. And she's so happy to do it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> It's great. Anyway, so, uh, and then, uh, do you know, like, th the three things that you just, like, it guts you to, to, to see those things or to... When you think about them, like three of your least favorite things. Um, now that we're in this COVID world, I really did not realize I dislike when people actually touch me in public or bounce me in public. Like I didn't realize how much I dislike that until now. It just always gets me because I'm not somebody that's hard, that's hard to miss. If you're walking by me, you can see me. I'm not short. I'm not easy to miss. People tell me that my head big. So. I I know you see me standing there or walking there. So So why are you touching me? <laughs> yeah, so why are you touching me? <laughs> Especially in these COVID times, like trust me. Um So your least favorite thing is being people touching you. Yeah, like bouncing me in public and stuff like that. Um uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Um I dislike bad drivers, like purposefully bad drivers on the road like you have no taxi reckless. no i have no taxi well well maybe i have a couple <laughs> but um i dislike bad drivers on the road i do get told that i drive like a taxi man sometimes because i'm always living on the horn always 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 my wife tells me say again why why mm. oh when people just drive like they don't know how to drive on the road i mean that's different from bad driving but like yeah just to tie it back to the taxi man thing but i really dislike bad drivers reckless drivers just people with no regard for like the road code or whatever really don't like that and um can i think of another one can i think of another one i don't like onion on my burger i really don't like onion on my burgers you don't like onions on your burger yeah, I don't like onions on my burgers. Mm. Okay. <laughs> All right, I get it. I get it. Uh, how did you discover that you were creative? Do you, can you remember the first thing that... Because, first of all, you said that when you're creating, that's one of your most favorite mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. When did you discover that feeling? And what, what, what were you doing? And what was it like? When did you discover that? Um, it has to be back in high school. Um, one of my friends had a slide up um, Samsung, Samsung phone and I remember borrowing it for the duration of school or something like of the sort like that and when I was using it it just took great pictures that was like one of the first things 
And then following that, I had gotten introduced to Photoshop back, this was like 2006. So like those two events like really made me realize that I have a love for imagery and creating and stuff like that. And then, but more so like taking pictures with the camera phone at the time, everybody was so annoyed with me at school because I was just running around in front of everybody's face with the phone, just snapping pictures of everybody. And to this day, that is how I still have high school pictures of a lot of my friends and they don't even know it. But I have a lot of memories from just doing that. So that's when that journey started. So that's about 14 years now, 14 years ago, I think, or probably more. But yeah, that's how it started. How did you nurture it? Just by doing it more, doing it every chance I got and um, just studying, reading up, well not reading, like watching like YouTube videos, asking questions from people who are like a couple of steps ahead of me in whatever craft I wanted to learn. So yeah, just like general stuff, but mainly, mainly a lot of YouTube and a lot of asking questions and aligning yourself with people who have the same vision for whatever you want, for whatever um, craft you want to excel in. Okay. Um, you talked about telling people <clears throat> your first way of describing yourself is Christian. Mm -hmm. um, and so I don't know if that means it plays a big um, role in how you create or what you create or who you create with or who you create for. But before mm -hmm. you answer any of those questions, how did that Christian journey begin? Um, I got baptized in the first time I got baptized in 2002. So that was, that's a long time ago. I don't even know how much years ago that was, but I was about 11 at the time, I think about to turn 12 or just turn 12. It was in December. I remember it vividly. It was in December because we had class party in primary school and I, I had came to that class party telling my friends that. I got baptized over the weekend and then um a lot of year, a lot of years passed after that i went to high school was now in community college and i i had gotten baptized again in 2010 it was a january i remember that vividly as well so like the majority of my teenage years and into well to where i'm now i have been a christian so i i have been a christian for more than half my life so that's that's how it started so it has been and always have been and will be a part of a who part I of am who as a are. person. Yeah, exactly. But why did you get baptized again in 2010? You felt like you needed to... So here's the question. Why did I get baptized again? And my answer to that is when I got baptized, I was about 10, 11 or 12, somewhere there, as I said just now, right? And when I got baptized the second time, I was about 19 going on 20 or 20, somewhere there about. I think it was 19 going on 20, because it was 2010, yeah. But the reason why I got baptized again is we're going to a new church for about four or five years, right? And I wouldn't have learned or have known as much as I did when I got baptized the first time, because I was 10 or 11, compared to when I got baptized the second time, because that would have been about almost 10 years. I would have learned a lot, you know, as a Christian young man growing up, so based on what i had learned as a christian i realized that um i made a lot of mistakes as a christian i wasn't walking as uprightly and as blamelessly as i should so there was a baptism being held at our church and i decided that hey well a lot of people decided to get baptized again but i was like personally for me it was like hey this is like a fresh start right a new chapter being like you know becoming a man because i was 11 12 now I'm going in my 20s, so that's a whole new chapter of life, right? And since then, I'm taking my Christianity much more seriously, obviously, because I'm a, I'm an adult now, so I know how serious it is to be walking uprightly and righteously versus, you know, being a teenager in high school, you know, you want to be cool. and so, Well, I wanted to be cool and fit in with everybody else. I don't know about you guys. That's just me. Um, so that was one of the reasons why I decided to get baptized again, so... Let's get back to the interview. So, does being a Christian mm -hmm. um, and like being a creative, do you encounter any kind of 
clashes or conflicts with the the work uh, and i say this in this conflict context sometimes mm -hmm. creative people can be a little bonkers and a little off the wall yeah. and a little you know <laughs> kind of just out there um, yeah. and that may sometimes contravene a christian conviction or you know the how a christian should behave and so yeah i'm trying to figure out if you know somebody who has embraced creativity and embraced christianity do you find any difficulty in just being present for those two things um i think before i answer that question god has been good and faithful where i haven't been faced with too many um like faith compromising decisions regarding jobs right so god has been good and i'm thankful for that and i pray he keeps it that way but yes i have gotten a few inquiries in the past where i have to like because before i do a job i always ask questions right and like if somebody says they want to do a shoot sometimes rarely i ask like what will outfits be and stuff like that and if it's a, if it is a case where somebody sends you a message on social media right Nothing is wrong with just clicking to see who that person is by going on their page, if it's not private. So you can kind of discern things from what you see online, or just by the way persons are talking, you know, you can use discernment. Well, you should be able, as a Christian creative, to discern who somebody is. So, um, as I said earlier, though, I haven't been faced with a lot of compromising decisions to be made. And if I, if I were or was in the past, it's always like, I'm not, I'm not able to do this. I can recommend it to someone else who would do this. Um, I mean, I don't necessarily say it like that, but I have colleagues who are not Christian, so um, I just pass it off to them should that situation arise. And I've done that in the past as well. All right. Um, so you haven't had to cancel too many of those, meaning you haven't been faced with a lot, you said, not too many. No, not a lot. Um, and good. you've been that able to good. navigate those situations and not have any regrets yes 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 are there any things that you've done that you regret doing from from a creative work standpoint like are you like mm, i should not have taken this project um yes in the sense that it, it all comes back to discerning um <laughs> yes in the sense in the sense that um if i could not have discerned and this is no disrespect to anybody is if i could not have discerned like that this person would have been like a slight headache creatively right um so that that is always like a regret of mine like i always tell myself and pitch myself and say like hey you should have known that this person would have been like asking all these unnecessary questions and stuff like that and i mean people are people you won't get away from that but that's how just that's just how i um view it all right, we're talking with Christopher James, C. Jam, some of you know him as, or his blog, Learn, Share, Photo, Video. We're going to take care of some business, and we've got more with Christopher James. This is Engage Indeed Daily, and we're talking with Christian creative Christopher James, C. Jam. Is it C. Jam Photos or just C. Jam? Because it's photon. Um, C Jam is the person. Um, Christopher James, C Jam, the C from Christopher and the Jam from James, and then C Jam Photos is my photography. That's the brand. So people just automatically just call me C Jam. Yes, I think I could have made the leap from C from Christopher and Jam from James. <laughs> but thanks though, thanks for that guided um, uh, God. <laughs> arrival. <God. laughs> Ah, oh boy. Okay, so we were talking a little bit about the type of projects you take on and, and how mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your, your Christianity is maintained in that because you say... So, so is it that you would tell people that you're a Christian when they come to work with you or is it that just people just know and so you only get work from Christians? How does that work? I'd say it's, it's, a, um, it's a little bit of both. Um, every one of my platforms have on it that i'm a christian right first things first i'm a christian in all my bios on social media i'm a christian even on my websites and then if somebody comes to me with a particular project and i realize that what the person wants may be a bit um taxing faith-wise i say hey i'm only asking these questions because i'm a christian so no offense 
I've done that multiple times, like just stated it up front that I'm a Christian. So yeah, a little bit of both. Oh, and how do people react to that? It's always in good faith. It's always in good faith. I mean, once you treat people personally and with respect, I mean, it's always it's always favorable. It's always favorable. And as I said before, God has been faithful. Um, nothing that I have done, so I am I am grateful. Now, it's learn, share, photo, video. How did that come about? I have no idea. All the Holy Spirit. I think I wrote it all the time. I don't know where that name came from. So it's definitely not me. Um, all right. Well, what is it? How does it work? How has it been working? I. It has been good. Um, before it started, I knew I wanted to, for years, I think like three years, I had it in my mind. Or the Holy Spirit has just been like, pressing it against me to like you're watching all these youtube videos you can do it too it, it, it was just always a thought in the back of my head and then i knew i wanted to share what i know in photoshop and the photography and videography and graphic design and everything so i guess that's where the learn and the share came came from and then the photo video obviously but um how how, how it's going is that i didn't know that there were so many people who are or who were interested in what I do. So it all started with me asking questions online on social media if this is something that people would be interested in. I asked like people close to me first and then I made it ask the questions publicly. And based on the feedback, I did three videos first. The feedback was real good. Didn't do anything after that. Did did another three. Took an entire year break. Well not really a break. I just slacked off and didn't do anything. But um Based, I started back this year, January, just with photography and videography tips and tutorials. And then I asked a question, like, would you guys be interested in in a photo a Photoshop tutorial from me? And everybody said yes. And I did the tutorial. And to this day, that Photoshop part one tutorial that I did is my biggest video today. And that has contributed to like 95% of the growth of um, Learn Share Photo Video on YouTube. So, Did people tell what were what were some of the main comments they were making about that video? I don't even remember like some of the comments. There's just so many comments on that video. I think it's like three hundred plus comments. But I remember some of the earlier ones were like someone said like they can't wait for part two. People were saying like they've been waiting on this for a long time. People, a lot of people have commented and and said that um, I made something so complex, like so simple with the way I broke it down. So. The, the feedback has been truly overwhelming and I tell my friends like people who are close to me otherwise that um this is just so I still can't believe that this is happening this is just all so surreal if, so you might people somebody on the outside may look and think that I have it all together but I'm still like trying to get used to what is actually happening now but now you have 10,000 subscribers um, did you put any kind of special effort into growing it what how did that happen i don't know it how it happened but as i said when i launched that first photoshop video everything that started taking off and i realized that people want this thing so i said okay let me do some more photoshop tutorials and then it really just started taking off in terms of me doing anything i just do the usual um i post a video on youtube then i take to my social media pages and share it and you know saying link in bio etc you know the works and um share it on whatsapp to people and that's it that's all i have done i've never spent any money to promote or market this um youtube channel so all this growth all this growth sorry is just is just the the, the goodness of god you know just the, the 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 expansion of borders from the grace of god like i have no answer for like where the success came from i have no answer to that it's nothing nothing at all that i have done trust me nothing at all so are you gonna promote now um promote in the sense of like doing things differently yeah i no. mean to try and get it up to 20 and and thirty thousand <laughs> and a uh, hundred thousand and you know onto the million i mean because don't you do, it, so i would imagine that your page is um your channel is monetized so all this 
well per views. Yeah, but I mean, for me, uh, for me, it's not it's not the number of subscribers. For me, it's just like putting out the videos that people want that can help at least the one person. That has always been something near and dear to me. Like the videos I put out must be able to help one person. So that that's how I look at it. It's not really the numbers. And I think that's probably one of the main reasons why the numbers always surprise me. But I always try and put out videos that will help people. You know, no matter what topic the video is about, once somebody can be edified from it then. That, that's, so outside that's of that, that outside of that Photoshop video, what else can we find at um, Learn, Share, Photo Video? Um, you can find Adobe Illustrator tutorials, Adobe Premiere Pro tutorials. I have other Adobe tutorials coming from different software. I have like photography tips, like how to take good photos, stuff like that. Um, I have lighting tips for photography. And I also have some videography, like how to film like good videos coming soon as well, like at the beginning of 2021 as and stuff like how to set up live streaming for churches, stuff like that. Cause, because you know, live stream is booming now mm -hmm. and not just like a big video production but like live streaming with your phone for people who want to start youtube channels as well so like i realize that people are asking me more questions whether it's comments or dms not only based on the photoshop tutorials but they want to know like other things in on other avenues of creativity so like i'm just trying to help help um, did you get any formal possible. training in any of these things that you are you are profiting from no, no formal training whatsoever. Um, how it officially, officially started following back from that cell phone story I, I told you earlier. Like a friend of mine, Sean, you, you know Sean, Sean Life, he was in a rap trio back in the day. Yes. And when he realized this, he said um, that was Sons of the Prophet for all the young people. <laughs> when he realized, um, as I have a knack for this, he, another friend of mine, Damoy, he had a camera and he was a part of the trio as well. And I remember using his camera to photograph them on one of their first major, major headlining shows. I think it was Genesis 2008. And from there, it, it, it really just took off. I started traveling with them to their different, different shows. And um, it, the, the rest is basically history, as they say, because it was only up from there in terms of like realizing that, hey, I really, really like this thing so i always tell everybody that um when i tell people my story and i don't really tell a lot of people my story but um i always say it started in 2008 because that was my first official thing when sean said hey come take some picture for me right so um much much respect to sean sean is like a big brother to me um massive massive gratitude uh, for trusting me at such a young age with what they with photographing their ministry documenting their ministry at the time um so a whole lot of memories back in the day so yeah that's how it officially officially um started and you just kept going but but didn't you study something like computer science or something like that yeah i studied it i studied it yeah i studied computer servicing and electronics uh, at community college and then i went to university and studied um at information technology um, but yeah, that's, that's all it is. Nothing to do with like art or anything. I didn't even take art in high school. Right. So that, that's know. what I was going to say. How, how, how come you didn't go study something that was in line with what you were doing? Um, because I didn't know what I wanted to do <laughs> in high school. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I did math and English traditionally. I did TD. I loved TD. That's the only one I got in CXC. I did chemistry and biology failed those i did accounts and office administration failed those well uh, failed accounts passed office administration by the standard of a three so the courses i took in high school um in exams were all over the place they were very very unrelated in like a career path excuse me they, excuse me they were very very unrelated in um charting with a clear career path or a path of study because i remember because i had gotten that one in td i thought i wanted to do architecture and then i went to community college in the first year and actually did engineering because 
I don't remember why I chose engineering over architecture. I think the architecture was full. The program was full. But when I did engineering, I didn't have physics. And it just wasn't gelling. And I actually did that first year, failed terribly. And then after that failed year, I, I was like, all right, I really like the computer course in that engineering um, program. So, And I had a natural knack for computers all the time. So I just let me just try computers. And that's how I ended up in IT. And then, you know, all the photo stuff and the creative stuff started from in high school. So that was always like, an accompanying thing with the IT and the creativity and that's 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 how it all um started. I've never applied I've never worked an IT job before. <laughs> um so that's all I went to school for. Nothing to do with creativity. Nothing, nothing. Just like revelations from the Holy Spirit and like teaching myself. So that's it. Regarding would you would you do that though? Like would you go do like a, a film degree or something to do with lighting or anything in that creative space would you go go learn uh, you know formally um given that i have the time and a course that i really like i realize that i like and be, i would be interested in yes i would um if it was up to me to just decide to do that tomorrow for the next four years no <laughs> understood <laughs> <laughs> oh boy um all right so the 10,000 subscribers is all god the talent Indeed. the gift the the your ending up in this era is all god um exactly. that suggests that you're like you know a very christian christian person would you <laughs> would it also suggest that you're one of those christians who have like some favorite scriptures that you are, are oh. that you live by <laughs> I have to be careful with your questions in a calendar. Your questions are always come, in, <laughs> come with some secret compartments. Secret compartments. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but um, in terms of favorite scriptures, yes, I do. Um, I always try and read these or every day, even if I do nothing else, like Psalm 51. You know, I always have to try living a life of repentance. Psalm 91. Need the protection of the Holy Spirit at all times. Uh, that's two. Um, Proverbs 16, 3. Commit your plans to the Lord and He will see them to the success. And um, Psalm... I don't want to say Psalm 100 because I don't do that one every day. But those three for sure. Definitely those three. Say definitely, them again? Definitely. Psalm 51, Psalm 91, Proverbs 16, 3. I know I have some more, but they're just not coming to me right now. But yes. All right, cool. Romans 12, Romans 12, Romans 12. Being kind to people, Romans 12. How about music? What are some of the songs that keep you motivated? Um, Right now, creatively, I actually always listen to Promises by Maverick City. Um, oh yeah, that was good. It, yeah, great is your faithfulness. Just like such good worship. Um, I'm not really a worship guy, you know, but like I've been on those kind of music f for a long time now. I don't know why. I don't know what's happening to me. <laughs> and also, Communion by Maverick City. Touch the Sky by Hillsong, but it's not the traditional Touch the Sky. It's the one from the Off Dirt and Grace album, and then. Graves into Gardens by Elevation and Touch the Sky, which version you can play that for? Off Dirt and Grace. Off I think Dirt they recorded and Grace. Oh. Off Dirt and Grace. I think they recorded that in Israel. Off Dirt and Grace, yeah. Um, that one just has a completely let's hear different Because I know Touch the Sky, but I don't know if I know that version, so let's hear it. Mm -hmm. I like this version. I, I'm gonna listen. To, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, it's very I didn't nice. know of this version, but it's it's really it nice. Very nice. Trust me. Yeah, very because nice I know the middle. touch the sky is obviously a bit more up tempo, but this one mm -hmm. is nice. Yeah, and yeah, but this one acoustic-y and almost ballady mm -hmm. as well. It's it's yeah. it's really very very nice. Okay, so we got promises. Too long for us to play any bit of that, but promises <laughs> is one of my favorite of the moment as well. Um, communion. Yes, yeah can be a little annoying, but yes, uh, I get that. Touch the sky. And then you said one, two, three. Give me the fourth one. 
um, Graves into Gardens by Elevation, and then number five, Breathe slash Water Friend by Hillsong Worship. Oh, I don't know if I know that one. Breathe Water Friend. Breathe Water Friend, trust me, Colander, like, trust me. You have that one? Can we hear a little bit of it? Breathe. Slash Water Friend, or Breathe Water Friend. It's really sort of a classic worship song that people mm-hmm, sing a lot in church. Mm-hmm. So this is a, mm-hmm. an interesting version. So I guess I'll, we'll get to the water friend part a little later on. I gather this very long song. Yes, it is. Trust me. Water friends comes at the exact the end, the end, the end, like the last two minutes. Okay, so these are like your jam right now. Yeah, like in right this, now. In like. this season, mm-hmm. you're always playing these songs. You know? Always, do you like? Always. Do you like need to breathe? Love, love need to be. I think somebody told him a secret in a calendar. Somebody do what? No. <laughs> I think somebody told him a secret. Love need to breathe. So like. I, no, well, I asked because I, I love need to breathe, and then their new album is is my is my jam right now. So I'm surprised. Like, I'm surprised Calando, I'm not hearing any of the songs from them. On, I have on your. I literally have the need to breathe album right here in plastic. I wish this was a video interview, but I'm going to do it and show you because I'm recording this. Here is the Need to Read album, Out of Body, still in the plastic, but I only listen to the digital, the digital um, copy I got from Amazon. Love Need to Read. So love, you, love, you, love. you bought the literal copy? Literal copy. It's right here in my hand. I wish you could see it. I don't know if you can hear the plastic. I can hear the plastic. And <laughs> sud- <laughs> suddenly you've just become like 500 times cooler to me that you literally have a, f- <laughs> a, a physical copy. That's how I would roll too. I'll just... I'm a huge Need to Breathe fan. Huge. Yeah, man. This is great. The, the album is great. Um, Trust me. The song, uh, like my favorite song on the album right now is... Banks and Banks on the Rivers, jeez. And um Survival. Yeah, Jesus I need you come get me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Survival and Banks. But it's a it's a really cool album. It's a very different album. How but, so? I mean you know songs like Multiplied, right? Yes. Yeah. You know you 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 can feel how heavy the Holy Spirit was on Multiplied, right? But this is just a diff. It's not as, it's not as churchy, as like multiply. Multiply is just one song. But I don't know if you can get the contrast. But like, it's a very different album compared to Rivers in the Wasteland. Very different. Not that anything is wrong with different. I love it, you know. But it's very different. And it's not All right. So I have to. You have to come back. Well, and we we do like a review of the album and talk about it from me and play the songs. Yes, what do you Because if you're a fan, who who best to to hear talk about the music than the fans? <laughs> As a fan, you have proper context and and all that thing, so people can learn and go. Learn I appreciate too. that. I appreciate. So that. I'm gonna bring you back to talk about this because I want to talk more about this album. It feels very need to breathe to me. Like you know, these are the stuff that they do all the time. There's oh no, a- yeah, it is need to breathe. You know, it's just different in comparison to like Rivers in the Wasteland. It's definitely need to breathe. Well, course. I probably That's need to I listen so to Rivers in the Wasteland the whole album and then yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and then we can talk um some more about it. But Chris. Thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm going to ask you two final things because we're out. I just need you to quickly tell folks, you know, give some advice to aspiring Christian cre- um, content creators, mm-hmm. um, what they should do. I mean, your content is not even like content about Bible and Jesus and your journey and whatever. Not that you mm-hmm. couldn't do that, but your yeah. content is primarily about the creative arts, um, yeah. even though, you know, you don't hide the fact that you're a Christian. So that's kind of, um, it's good because then you're being useful to the, to the society beyond just walking around claiming mm-hmm. Christianity and trying to save yes, the world. Yes, and that is it, Kalando. We live in the world, even though we're not of it. We still live in the world. We still live in the world. But how would you advise Christians who are thinking of becoming content creators? Any, um, what's the one thing that they need to do? Your talents are not yours alone. They need to be shared. And uh, don't excuse me. Don't be afraid to share them. Don't be afraid to use them to further yourself and to help others. Most importantly, and do not leave out the Holy Spirit. Like 
in the creative process. I struggle the hardest when I leave him out. Can't create anything substantial when I leave him out. Like even in just like putting ideas together, don't leave him out. Um, so that would be my number one advice. The Holy Spirit is your helper and guide. That's his job. So don't leave him out. Wicked. How do people find you? Um, on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Learn Share Photo, um, L E A R N Share Photo, and then on YouTube, youtube.com slash Learn Share Photo Video, the full name. Learn Share Photo Video on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Learn Share Photo. Even if you search Learn Share Photo Video on social media, you'll find it as well. Thank you so much, Chris. And we have another appointment to talk about need to breathe when we catch up again. <laughs> Great to catch up. Good to right, know that you're, you're doing all right. And keep creating. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure having a conversation. Yeah, Thank you for having me. All right. Talk soon. That, take, that right, takes man. care of our discussion for today. And I can get out of Shivani's here now because I'm sure he's had enough.